The exercise is shown are for informational purposes only. Only attempt any workout under professional supervision with a qualified trainer and at your own risk. Always consult your physician before attempting any physical exercise. By watching any part of this video, you expressly agree to release and discharge the producers and trainers and waive any right and legal action for personal injury or property damage. Welcome to Kick Fit with Jose Ortega. We're going to start out this exercise with a bunch of jumping jacks. After 20 jumping jacks, they're going to squat down, do three sets of burpees. When you do your jumping jacks, just get your arms loose, warm up, get a good breath, breathe, then jump up and down. As you do your burpees, spread out like you're doing a push-up. Hop back up and leap up high in the air. It's a good way to get your blood flowing, warm up, get your body going. 20 push-ups and three burpees. Keep the rhythm going and pretty soon your body be warm and full of breath. We're going to start today's drill with two push kicks, starting with left push kick, then right push kick. And then a right kick, followed by a left kick, a right kick again, and left kick again. We're going to repeat that pattern, left push kick, right push kick, right kick, left kick, right kick, left kick. One more time, left push kick, right push kick, right kick left kick, right kick, and then left kick. So many times in Muay Thai when we say the word kick, we mean round kick. And you can see that round kick coming from an angle. And when we say push, or it usually means push kick. That's the front kick. Front kick that goes straight ahead. So left push kick, right push kick, right kick, left kick, right kick, and left kick. It's kind of a speed drill, get your body moving, turning, and the direction of the kicks are, are two different directions. So left push kick, uh -huh. right push kick, right kick, left kick, right kick, left kick. And when we say kick, we just mean round kick. Muay Thai, the round kick is so popular, we end up just saying the word kick, and that's exactly what we mean, round kick. You repeat this drill. And a lot of times when we do drills like this, it develops a muscle memory. And we want to be able to have good form, have good muscle memory. And it's really going to help you throw your kicks fast and with power. Now the push kick or the front kick is sometimes um, used defensively and it's used to keep your opponent away because it's a straight kick. You can control the distance with that kick. You can see our left foot is forward, so you kind of just slide in with that left push kick, right push kick, right kick, left kick, right kick again, left kick again. And those round kicks, your body should be facing sideways. That means you have good rotation on the kick. You're turning your hip, you're turning your feet over, you're pivoting, and that's very important. It's important too, when you do the push kick, it's to not overextend, not fall over. And we wanna make sure we have that discipline because if you push kick and you fall over, you're off balance and then you're subject to a counter attack. So whether you hit the target or you don't hit the target, you want to drive your hip forward, but if you miss, you still want to be balanced that you can recover from that kick. So if you notice when you do the push kick, your knee is actually facing straight up to the ceiling. When you do the round kick, the knee starts turning and it faces the wall. And that's one way to know if you're doing the kick correctly or not. In push kick, the knee faces the ceiling, 
the round kick, the knee turns, and it faces the wall. So if you're doing a round kick and it's facing the ceiling, you're not turning your hips over enough, the kick is not coming from arc enough. I'm gonna switch off with our partner and repeat the same drill. If you don't have a pad holder, you can do this against a heavy bag or do it in front of a mirror. You can shadow the technique. You can still get an aerobic workout by using these techniques in the air. A lot of times when you see the striker use that push kick, they're able to drive the opponent backwards. And by driving them backwards, they control the distance. When you use that push kick, try to extend your foot forward. And just roll your toes back so when you're striking, you're striking with the ball of your feet. And always when you finish your sequence, finish with your hands up and your guard high. Every strike, every kick in this exercise, you should be breathing out. So we see Alan in the blue shorts, and he's breathing every kick. When you use that push kick, drive your hip forward. When you do the round kick, push your hip into the kick. And you see, we can use our arms to counter counterbalance. So when you use the push kick, the right push kick comes out, the right hand drops down. Same thing with the round kick. When you round kick with the right leg, the right arm swings out. When you round kick with the left, the left arm swings out. It emulates a walk cycle, just like the way you would walk if you're taking a stride, walking down the street. Your arms would naturally move, so it emulates a natural walk cycle as you're kicking. If you're able to get that thrust in that kick and that whipping motion in the round kick, you should be able to strike with a lot of power. Whip those hips around. And if you imagine that you had a stripe on the side of your leg, as you do that round kick, that stripe should be facing the ceiling. And that means you're turning over the kick far enough so your body should be almost sideways. Keep practicing until you can get that round kick and push kick. Let's take a look at combo number one. Let's take a look at the technique again. You start off with the left jab, and that's the front hand. The front hand comes out forward. Left jab. You take a small step here. Slide in with the rear foot and execute the left push kick. As you land, the left foot lands forward. Strike with the right knee. knee comes back and you're going to use the elbow strike left side right side elbow then the left hand is going to clear any obstruction so you're going to clear your opponent's arm 
and using the right hand you can grab the back of the neck as you do you take a small step and pivot outward and that will throw them off balance and then you will strike with the knee strike it's one of the more advanced combinations but it's a good way to see how you start from an outside range to get in close left jab left push kick land forward right knee land back left elbow right elbow parry the hand out grab the neck swing the rear foot which is your right foot back and that chambers for that right knee let's take a look at half speed all right so left jab slide in left push kick land with the left foot forward right knee boom left elbow right elbow clear the arm for any obstruction so you can grab the neck take a step swing the right foot back which will chamber for that right knee one more time at half speed left jab left push kick right knee left elbow right elbow parry and grab the neck swing the right leg back fire the right knee let's take a look as he does the technique in the air so again from the front angle you see Jose getting ready he strikes with the left jab takes a step with the left push kick lands with the foot forward left foot still in front that gives him the right knee uses the left elbow uses the right elbow parries grabs the back of the neck pivots backwards and throws a knee strike again at half speed so again a little faster jab push kick right knee left elbow right elbow parry the arm grab the neck fire the right knee Let's take a look from a side angle it looks complicated but if you break it down step by step it's pretty easy left jab left push kick what does that bring you naturally walking in that right knee when your foot lands back and naturally folds you into the left elbow and then the right elbow and it'll naturally unfold your arm so you can grab the back of the neck pivot and throw that knee take a look again left jab left push kick right knee left elbow right elbow parry grab the neck pivot throw the knee and we want to pivot so that we can get our opponent off balance and set up a new angle for ourselves to strike again let's take a look in slow motion from the side angle left jab right push kick step in forward right knee prepare for left elbow right elbow parry the arm grab the back of the neck pivot 90 degrees and fire that right knee one last time jab push kick right knee left elbow right elbow parry grab right knee if you knew to kick fit what you'll see is the students applying this technique against the pad work and in the bottom left you'll see Jose repeating the same technique so if you get lost at any time 
Just follow the technique in the bottom of the screen. So you can either follow the class, your virtual class, as if you were in the class also, or follow the technique. And again, the breakdown again. Looking at the bottom left, use that left jab. And then that front leg, that front left push kick, comes in, creates distance, doesn't allow the opponent to come forward. Step in, throw that right knee. The knee comes back. That sets you up to throw the left elbow, right side elbow. Parry the arm with the left hand and reach out with the right hand to grab the back of the neck. Take a step and then swing the right foot back, almost like you're dragging your opponent around, and then fire that right knee. Boom. Try it on your own. Now if you're watching, you can do it step, step by step at a time. You can just start with a jab and push kick. So left jab, left push kick. And you can do that several times till you feel that you have that rhythm. Left jab, left push kick. And after that, then you can add that right knee. So you use left jab, left push kick, add that right knee. When you've done that like five or six, maybe 10 times, then you add the next thing, which would be left elbow, right elbow. So it'd be jab, push kick, knee, left elbow, right elbow. Once you get comfortable with that, you can move on to the next thing, which is parry and grab the neck, pivot out and throw that right knee. You can take it step by step if you want. Start with two moves, then add another move, then add another two moves, and then add the final moves at the end. A lot of times we call that building the combination. You can build the combination step by step. Sometimes you try the combination all at once, it's too complicated, too many movements and too hard to remember. But when you break the technique step by step and slowly add punches and kicks and elbows and knees, slowly add and accumulate the combination, a lot of times it's so much easier. Take your time with this. Proper form, proper execution is paramount. Anytime you're doing this against a heavy bag or with a striking partner, you wanna make sure you're balanced. So whether you hit the bag or you hit the air, you should never overextend, should never lose your balance. Once you take a look at the bottom right hand of the corner again, and I want you to notice when Jose uses his elbow strikes. And in the elbow strikes, we put the other hand, the non-striking arm, very high to cover the head, see? It covers the head. And the reason why we wanna do that is because when you can elbow somebody, they can elbow you right back. It means you're that close. Elbow weapons are sometimes very hard to see because you're so close. Most people will never throw the elbow from far away. It's only when they've worked their way closer with long range techniques and they end up right in front of the opponent. It's when they'll clinch and throw the elbow strikes. So because you are clo closing in and using the elbows at close range, make sure your non-striking hand will protect you from your opponent's elbow strike. Again, if you can elbow them, they can elbow you back right away. We've seen many fights where our fighters may be winning the fight and then all of a sudden they get cut by an elbow and the fight is stopped because of that. So we want to make sure we have good protection on our heads so we keep the opposite hand, the non-striking hand, tight against the head while you throw the elbow strike. 
you see a Muay Thai fight and somebody's bleeding, it's usually because of the elbow. And that bony part of the elbow against the soft part, the thin skin of the skull, really, really uh, makes it very simple to cut somebody with an elbow. I've trained many bouncers that worked at bars and they said, hey, you know, usually everything ends with one knee and one elbow. And uh, these short range techniques are very, very powerful, very, very effective. Now the whole team is rallying out with a series of five kicks. Again, keep practicing. Follow the drill at the bottom. Take it step by step. And make sure your technique is very clean. Now sometimes after you finish doing the drill with your partner and it's the third round, you can hit what we call freestyle and that's just kind of like working out with your partner. They'll call different combinations or different punches. And uh, But when they say the word combo, they'll usually refer to combo number one or the combo they worked out earlier. And in this case, you can see that combination working along freestyle techniques, which is a lot of fun. It's more organic, more like actual fighting, more spontaneous. So in Muay Thai, in ancient Muay Thai, they had katas, like a preset form. But they're, not, they're not very rarely practiced nowadays. Fighting is just so interactive and so... It just depends what the other person will do and every person with a different height or different body size or different power, strength or weakness will fight differently. And that's why there's no one size fit all in um, techniques. So we usually don't practice these kata techniques. But again, we use the word combo for just the shorthand. So instead of saying left jab, left push kick, right knee, left elbow, right elbow, parry grab, swing back knee, we just say the word combo. And by that time, they've already worked out the combination and you know it's that series of moves. Let's look at the bottom left. Let's count the moves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And eight. Eight move combination for combo number one. Practice that until it's second nature to you. Let's take a look at combo number two. So combo number two is just a little bit different. And what it requires you is to use the opposite side. You're gonna use the right hand first and the right push kick. Last time we used the left hand first and the left push kick. So as you stand with your partner, throw the right cross, the rear hand forward. Use the rear leg, the right push kick, 
and when you finish that, land with the foot forward, and that'll chamber you, that will chamber you to throw to the left knee. And now you use the right side elbow, the left side elbow, Carry the left hand out with the right hand, with your right hand. Grab the back of the neck with your left hand. Swing the left foot back and execute the left knee. So combo number two is very similar to combo number one, but we're developing the right side, the opposite side. Muay Thai, we want to develop symmetry. We want the techniques to work from both angles both sides so right cross right push kick land with the right foot forward that allow you to step in with that left knee the left knee retracts giving you the right elbow the left elbow parry the arm grab the back of the neck with your left hand pull and swing your left foot back which will chamber you for the right knee Take a look again. So here you are. Throw the right cross. Boom. Right push kick. Boom. Land foot forward, which will set you up for the left knee. Boom. Left knee comes back. Right elbow. Left elbow. You're in a southpaw stance now. Parry that arm. Grab the neck. Turn. Boom. Fire that knee. Take a look one more time. Start with that cross, right push kick, land foot forward, left knee, retract the leg, left elbow, right elbow, left elbow, parry out, grab, and knee. Let's take a look with Jose executing this technique, straight to lens, right cross, right push kick, left knee, elbow, elbow, Parry out, and knee. Watch again. Start with the rear hand, punch straight out. Retract the hand, right push kick. Now land with the foot forward. You're in a southpaw stance now which means your right foot is forward. Execute that left knee. Two elbow strikes. Carry out, grab the neck, and execute that knee strike. Let's take a look again at half speed now. Use the rear hand. Right cross, right push kick, left knee, elbow, elbow, parry out, left knee. Take a look from a side angle, right cross, push kick, knee, elbow, elbow, parry out, pivot, and knee. Take a look again. So your left should be left foot should be forward. Throw that rear hand, which is the right hand, right cross. Throw the right push kick. Land forward. Chambers the left knee. Boom. Left knee. Use the left elbow, right elbow from the southpaw stance. Pivot out. Swing the left foot back and use that left knee. Let's take a look at half speed now. So it'll be a little bit faster from the side angle. Right cross. Right push kick. 
Right foot lands forward. Left knee. Left foot comes back. Left elbow, right elbow. Parry out. Left knee. Again, the last angle, we'll see from side direction again. That's at full speed. Taking a look at half speed, right cross. Right push kick. Land with the foot forward. Left knee. Put the foot back. Elbow. Elbow. Parry out. And knee. Yeah, let's take a look again. Right cross. Right push kick. Left knee. And when you use the elbows, you can use either elbow. Because you're in close range, whatever your body dynamics tells you to do, you should do that. Okay, our student's going to apply that technique. And once again, if you can look at the bottom left of the screen, if you get lost at any time, follow the technique. Follow it slowly. You can follow it step by step. You can see the pattern repeat over and over again. Build that technique. Build your confidence. Build your breathing. Build your rhythm so you can train safely, learn the technique, and make it effective. You see, Muay Thai is practiced by different people. If you look at the class, the age range just varies from, I think right there in that class, I can see a 17 year old there. And I can see somebody in their mid 50s there, quite a few that are in their mid 40s. And uh, it's for all ages. And you see females training too. So don't be intimidated. Find a local gym near you. Uh, validate if they are authentic and they're really doing Muay Thai or true kickboxing technique. And uh, it's different than aerobic kickboxing. So aerobic kickboxing, a little bit different. This is designed to actually compete or to strike or to use for self-defense. And as you do that, it's a little, you know, you want authentic training. You want real training. The, nothing against aerobic kickboxing or the Taibo type of things, but that's more designed to get your heart rate going, to exercise. This is actually contact and resistance, and it's based on true striking techniques. So sometimes in the, uh, the aerobic style of, of kickboxing, they use techniques and uh, that you would not really use in a fight. So like they do moves like you're punching a speed bag in the air. And that's not a technique you would use in, in real training or in a real fight. So, uh, but it's a great way to get good workout. And so just know what you want. And we always emphasize real Muay Thai, real authentic Muay Thai, but real authentic kickboxing, combative kickboxing. Again, your partner, if you want to be a good partner, you'll call out the techniques so that your partner can perform it. And uh, it also gives you uh, a way to memorize the technique too. So when you practice, practice step by step, practice slow, and then gradually you can build speed. And as you're building speed, you obviously should be more comfortable with the technique and you develop a rhythm you develop a style that you and your partner will work together with and as you do that you can train safely these drills are great against the tie pad which is the arm pads they're wearing right now but you can also do these techniques against the heavy bag if you have a punching bag at your gym or at home and if you don't you can always practice this against the mirror practice it watching this video on your iPad or wherever watch it and follow as long as you get moving make sure your technique is clean follow it and it's okay you make a mistake just you know build a little bit improve push yourself a little bit harder each time I like to tell my students to keep working harder and push yourself 20% more each round gradually Gradually increase your rate, increase your power. 
So now students are going to switch off. Jose's just showing that pivot technique. Uh, I know it's kind of hard to see right now, but he's showing that pivot technique. And the reason why, you want to pair your arm and grab the neck and pivot. When you do, you position your body 90 degrees away from your opponent. It turns them and it puts them off balance. And as it puts them off balance, when you take that step, it chambers your leg so you can strike forward with that knee strike. So it sets up your next technique in addition to throwing them off balance and offsetting your angle. There's a saying, practice makes perfect, but we like to add the words, perfect practice makes perfect. So you can practice, but if your technique is sloppy, it's not clean, you know, you have bad habits with the, um, with your technique, or with your non-striking arm, it develops bad muscle memory, and that's why we always want people to slow down first, slow down, gradually add your technique, add your power, but make sure your technique is clean. So perfect practice makes perfect. Sloppy practice will perfect your sloppiness, so we don't wanna do that. foreground with Jose is Brianna and Brianna just fought last week she got a win very very strong competitor she has a very high fight IQ when you show her something and you explain to her the reason why she does it and she does it very well very powerful girl she's been fighting at 126 pounds which is featherweight and doing very good with that Jose's trying to show her to thrust that hip when you're throwing that push kick. We want to breathe at every strike. Every strike breathing out gives you expulsive energy, forces you to draw oxygen back. And we have a running joke that if your opponent passes out, if you're holding pads and your partner passes out because they're not breathing, then you have to give them mouth to mouth resuscitation. So. Better pick a good looking partner or, uh, you know what, just breathe, breathe out. Here's the last 30 seconds they're gonna punch out. You're throwing straight punches or uppercuts or hooks. In our last 30 seconds out of every round we try to sprint out. take a one minute break, but most of the times in actual training, we only take a 30 second break. So we don't want to do a full minute break. So we're going for the second round now. So when you're training and you're doing these rounds here, and you should be at the point where by the second round, you can call the word combo and that combo should be flowing for you. Everything with your strike should always come from the rest of your body, meaning that if you punching usually you associate it with your arms but the shoulders come into play the shoulder is rolling that shoulder over driving that punch forward making that punch longer by rolling your shoulder turning your hips in that wind up it's almost like you're, when you throw in a baseball pitcher throws that ball there's a big wind up they use their hips their whole leg same thing it's although they're just throwing a ball that put the whole body into it and you want to train the same way too I'm going to put the hips behind every technique. 
and then your feet, you want to be able to push off, center your weight, drive your punches forward. So if you can imagine punching, and let's say you have a certain amount of power with your punch, when you step forward, when you drive yourself into the technique, you're adding the power of that punch or that kick, plus your body weight, and that's what gives you the additional power. Elbow combination. The elbows are very, very deadly weapons. Especially in the sport of combat, you, when you're fighting, your hands are gloved, but the elbows are not. They're just bare. And that's why they're so deadly. They generate short arc techniques. And because of that, it just generates so much power. I hate getting elbowed in the face. Which is why you should develop a rapport with your partner and make sure nobody gets elbowed while they're training. And as you go, keep pushing yourself. If you've gone this far, you can push yourself a little bit harder each time. Okay, the partner's gonna go back into the drill. And they're working their techniques, combining the freestyle techniques with the combination. Today we learned two combinations, combination one and combination two. Combination one was predominantly the left side. Combination two started with the right side. Basically the same techniques, but the technique is done from both the left and right side. In everything we do, we want to develop symmetry, we want to develop knowledge how to strike from both sides. Both sides will give you that variety of technique. And that's what we want to do. If you ever have the chance to hit pads with somebody, the striking is so meditative, it's so therapeutic when you hit something your partner's engaging you to strike hit different punches different kicks different knees they hold random styles of pad work and they see the target you see the target and you strike and when you do it engages your mind to see an opening and capitalize on that opening That interactivity is so much fun and it makes the time go by very fast and you get a great workout. If you're practicing alone or practicing while watching TV, you should be able to use all these different techniques that you learned earlier, put them all together and sometimes just practice one punch, two punches. Sometimes practice two kicks. You know, it's up to you. You can follow somebody on screen there or just bounce your eyes around and follow what someone else is doing. And that will give you that freestyle technique. Again, you wanna go back to the combo. Look at the bottom left hand of the screen and you'll be able to see the combination. Use that combination, remember it. Practice it, and at the end, always sprint out. Punch out, throw as many as you can until the bell rings, until that three minute mark finishes. This is gonna be the last round with these guys. They're working very, very hard, and now they're in the groove, they're in the zone. You can see the improvement everybody's doing. 
as they gradually built the rapport and built the techniques with their partner. Now they're striking a lot faster and it just kind of flows, that interactivity flowing. Jose earlier held pads for Brianna, now Brianna's holding for Jose. And Jose's a southpaw, Jose is actually left-handed. So she's able to make that adjustment very, very easily. Most of the people that I would train will be what we call orthodox, which is right-handed, which means the left foot is forward, the left hand is forward. And that's why we show these techniques. If you are a southpaw, you are left-handed, you just switch your stance and follow the technique, but do the opposite. So if you're southpaw, your right foot should be forward. The right hand is forward, the left hand is in the rear. It's the opposite of what an orthodox fighter position is. And we want the stronger hand in the rear, the stronger leg in the rear, because that generates the most power. So if you are an orthodox, your left foot is forward, your left hand is forward, and that allows the right hand and right leg to be in the rear. And that punch or kick will travel a longer distance, and that longer distance gives you that striking power. Your weaker hand and weaker leg is in front, and so those punches and kicks usually travel half the distance. So as you say, the front hand is stun, the rear hand is kill. If the front hand is hospital, the rear hand is mortuary. But because we have a power side, we also want to practice both sides and make sure that techniques can flow from both directions, both sides, and that will always keep your opponent guessing. It gives you a, a wider range and repertoire of techniques. Great job guys, we're finishing out this round. Everybody's moving great. Finding that flow, finding that groove, and that's where we wanna be. Let's review our combinations. Just take a look at combo number one. Combo number one again is that left jab, left push kick, right knee, left elbow, right elbow, parry the hand and grab the neck, and as you do, pivot around, fire that rear knee. Let's take a look again. Jab, push kick, knee, elbow, elbow, parry out, grab the neck and knee. We'll take a look slower. Remember, combo number one uses the front hand, which is the jab. The jab is always the front hand. It uses the left push kick or tie, it's called teep. As you finish that push kick, drop your leg forward, and then execute the right knee. But you're not gonna bring the right leg forward, you bring the right leg back, and that sets you up for the elbow strike. Elbow strike, parry out the hand with your forward arm, grab the back of the neck, with your rear arm or rear hand and that will give you control of your opponent. Take a small step with your left and then pull, swinging your right leg back and that chambers that right knee, boom, right away. Start with your hands up, and you reset, jab, left push, that small step you see, land forward, right knee, get ready, left elbow, that's the forward elbow, then the rear elbow, carry the hand out, grab the back of the neck, and knee. This section is the review. So we're reviewing the first combination we learned. 
Make sure it's correct. Left jab, left push kick. Right knee. Land, twist for left elbow. Right elbow. Use the rear hand, pair your opponent's arm out. Grab the back of the neck, take a small step, and then drag your right foot back, which will turn your opponent around. Then execute that right knee. Take a look again. See so you jab and then slide your rear foot and that will allow you to be balanced for that left push kick. Let's take a look from the front angle. Take a look at slow motion there. Jab, which is the left hand. Slide the rear foot, give you balance for the left push kick. Land with the foot forward, right knee, bring the right leg back. Chamber for left elbow, a right elbow. Parry the hand out, grab the back of the neck, swing, pivot yourself. 90 degrees and throw that right knee and again always land in stance take a look at half speed jab shuffle and push kick right knee left elbow right elbow parry grab around pivot and execute the knee Take a look from a side angle. Watch the technique again. And Jose does it in three different angles to make sure you can see his body position. See the hands hide, held high as he uses the elbow strikes. Jab, push kick, knee, elbow, elbow, parry out, grab, pivot, execute that knee strike. One more time from another side angle. Notice the range and try to pay attention to the footwork. The side angle, you can see the footwork a lot easier. You see he moves that right foot and it allows him to use that left push kick. And as he bends that leg, he comes forward and he walks right into that knee. And that knee comes backwards. And as he uses that elbow strike, he takes a small step. And as he pivots, he takes a small step with his left foot, drags his right foot back and uses that knee strike. Look at that footwork. Slide that right foot. It allows you to get your shoulders underneath your feet to execute that push kick. Followed by those knees and then the elbows and that pivot and that knee. Let's take a look at combo number two. Combo number two starts with the rear hand. So it's the rear cross, rear push kick, landing forward using that knee. Followed by the elbows and the last knee strike. So again, cross, push kick, knee, elbow, elbow, parry, pivot, and knee strike. Same technique, but we start out with the right. So it's a right cross, followed by that right push kick. Land the foot forward. That chambers that left knee. Strike with that left knee. Pushing that hip out. And then using the elbow strike. Right side, left side. Because you're in the southpaw stance. Parry that arm out. Grab the back of the neck. Step and just pull quickly. Get a jerk and pull them. 
and then execute that knee strike. It's important when you do that turn, you do a fast pull. So you don't want to drag the person, you want to just jerk them very quickly, off balance them and get that momentum going so you can off balance them. And you notice when you knee drive that hip forward, makes the knee longer, makes the knee travel longer and it allows you just to push right in there, get that big dig of that knee into your opponent's body. Boom. All right, at half speed, cross, right push kick. Knee, elbow, elbow. Parry out, grab, and knee. It's always good to review the techniques at the end so you will remember them. So here's a refresher. This is combo number two. A little bit more complicated than the combos you learned earlier, but nevertheless very, very effective. Take your time. Right cross, right push kick, left D, elbow, elbow, parry out, pivot, and left knee. Take a look again at half speed. Right cross, right push kick, left knee, elbow strike, elbow strike, parry out, grab the back of the neck, pivot the foot back, and then execute that long knee. Again, we're spending a little bit more time on the review because it is a lengthy combo. And because of this lengthy combo with complicated moves, we want to make sure we practice it, get it down effectively, so you will remember it and develop that muscle memory that we all long for. Side angle now. See the footwork you see it at full speed but again it's better to look and look at the breakdown at slow motion so you can follow it use the right cross the rear hand use the rear push kick land foot forward now set up the left knee your elbow strikes, parry the arm out, grab the back of the neck, pivot, 90 degrees, wang, throw that left knee, at half speed, cross, right push kick, left knee, elbow, elbow, Carry out and around, pivot, knee. Take a look one more time from another side angle. And the side angles, again, you can see the footwork much better. So you see, let's examine the footwork, the push kick, foot lands forward, the knee comes out, but the knee retracts. You can see the hips twisting on the elbow strikes. See that pivot, you drag the rear foot back, 
boom, and use the knee strike. Cross, push kick, knee, elbow, elbow, parry out and pivot, and knee strike. We hope you enjoyed this session. See you next time on Kick Fit with Jose Ortega.